Hello and welcome to The Olive Tree. I'm Julia Fisher and today we hear from Issa Amash, a Christian from Gaza now living in Bethlehem. Life for Christians in Gaza has become increasingly difficult and dangerous in recent times. And although there are a few remaining there, many have come to live in Bethlehem. For Isa, this meant leaving his family behind, and it was a costly decision. But life has not been plain sailing for him, as you will now hear. Paul Calvert met with Isa recently and brings us his story. Oh, I come from Gaza. I, I lived there all of my life. I born there. I get born there. My family is there. I have one brother and three sisters. And my father and mother, we live there. I have my brother, twin. Yeah, boy, that's where I'm from. Yeah. And what was life like in Gaza? It's normal life, but sometimes it's hard, like work, to find work or to pay money for a study. A little bit hard. Some wars also happened. Three wars. Sometimes not easy life there. You cannot travel. Every country ignore you, rejected you because you are from Gaza. Uh, they think you are terrorist. Gazan people, yeah. So when you're in Gaza, are you actually physically stuck in Gaza and you can't get out of that area? It's almost, yeah. You, you looks like you are stuck, like you are in so big prison. It's not easy to go out, to go maybe to Egypt, it's not easy to go to Bethlehem, it's also not easy. Yeah, you're almost stuck. Now, what is it like being a Christian in Gaza? Being a Christian looks like you are a candle in the darkness, house of light in the sea. Like, okay, there's two million Muslims between some 700 maybe Christians. It looks like you are so deep in darkness. So maybe God wants some people there to talk about Jesus, but it's also not easy because Muslims maybe there looks to you like, uh, okay, you're going to hell. You you never go to heaven. God don't love you because... The, the faith is so much different about Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, the Godfather. It's not easy. So to live as Christians there is, uh, as I said, you are a candle in the darkness, so deep in darkness. Yeah. And why did you come to Bethlehem? Why? It's more Christians here, more freedom here, work, you can find work, more salary and more income, more chance to work. I just like the life here. I felt a little bit more uh, freedom here, more than Gaza. At least there's a community Christians here, more freedom than Gaza. Yeah, that's... Mm. And was it easy actually to come from Gaza to Bethlehem, are there restrictions? Do you need permissions and things like that? It wasn't easy. Look, the young the young guys, young people, like between 18 till 34, it's not easy to get permission. In nine years, they didn't give this age a permission to go to, to Israel or to West Bank. But after this, they gave everyone a permission, and that was my chance in 2016. 2016. This was my chance to get permission and to come here. It's not easy at all to get permission and to, to go to come to Bethlehem. It's not easy because for sure Jewish will think, yeah, if you leave, he will stay in Bethlehem or he will stay in West Bank or he will stay illegal in Israel to work or to live there. Yeah, it's not easy to get permission to come here. Mm. To Bethlehem. Uh, now, of course, the coronavirus hit Bethlehem. How did that affect you personally? Yeah, it's uh, so big. Look, it affects me in work, affect me in what I save from money, affect me in, in my wedding. My plan was to, to marry here, to make my wedding here. My fiance is Dutch. I met her in the church, in Emmanuel Church in Bethlehem. Yeah, and our plan was to marry in Bethlehem. Now she cannot. My plan was to marry in April, and the coronavirus came to Bethlehem in, in March. So everything closed. So you were like one month off from your wedding when the coronavirus hit. 
yeah it was one month before my wedding mm. yeah so suddenly everything stopped uh, all plans you have is stop or closed stop door by door door by door close 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 she cannot come here i cannot go there i cannot see her i cannot marry her border close church close the whole to make wedding party close everyone work everything closed mm. so like the plans everything door by door as i said close 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 no chance anymore to see her not to marry no chance to see her <laughs> face to face That must have been really difficult because you want to see your fiance and then you hear that everything is cancelled. Had you planned a lot of things already in advance? Yeah, I I have a lot of plans A B C D till Z. But no plan I can say okay this is the plan that I can use because I don't know what the future is uh, hiding for me. But I believe I just believe that okay I knock a lot of doors I making a lot of plans but in the end what God want he will open the door and he God can choose a plan for me or maybe the plan of God it's I didn't think about it maybe till now so I'm just planning for a future hoping that I can see her I can marry her I can travel to her or she can travel to me this is uh, yeah so the effect of corona so strong on me mm. so strong mm. how did you feel I feel like it's uh, okay, like everything, I don't know how, everything stopped. Like I was dreaming, I was exactly, I was sleeping, dreaming, and suddenly, hey, hey, wake up. <laughs> you just open your eyes. Where I am? I'm still in bed. I didn't did anything. I wasn't planning. I just wake up in bed. Nothing, no wedding, no work, no, no church. <laughs> So, yeah, that's like shock. Uh, now, your family are still in Gaza. Could they actually come to a wedding in Bethlehem? It's not easy. Maybe yes, maybe no. It's just I need to apply for a permission for by the Nativity Church. Maybe they can help that I can say I want to marry here. I want my parents. I want. I want to uh, at least I want to see my mother or my twin. So there is a possibility that they could actually say no, and your mother can't even come and attend your wedding. Yeah, actually, I didn't see my mother from three years. She didn't get any permission to come here from three years. Mm. So I don't expect that Jewish will give my family a permission to to come to my wedding. It's not easy. Mm. So we just hoping if I marry here, I just hope that I just apply then. Everything what God wants. I don't believe that Jewish don't want, but anyway, it's not easy. What do you actually do here in Bethlehem? What do you work? Actually, I'm working here. I was working in restaurants and I was work in factory of gold. But now I was working in uh, olive wood in the morning. Then I have a free time, some few hours, like five hours free. I have a business of silver. I opened a small workshop, small business in my room. Yeah, and I'm working in House of Hope in the night, and I have, in the same time, I have a business workshop of uh, silver. I'm I'm working, I'm making necklace, silver names, or cross, or whatever you want. Designing, I'm making just, you say just, I want this, and okay, just tell me the idea, and I, I do what you say. It's just like design, I make it from zero. Necklaces and uh, bracelets, earring, and medallion. Yeah, any yeah. So sometimes I'm doing gold, but it's expensive. I cannot keep working in that. So yeah, this is my work in Bethlehem. Is this something that you started off doing in Gaza? Yeah, actually, yeah. My grandfather was have a factory there, and he was working there. And I was so young, I was in school, I was just was uh, visiting him, I was watching, I wasn't working, I just was watching, oh nice. So it's like, I learned this 
this uh, work or this business from I was watching while my grandfather working. So he'd be very proud of the fact that you're sort of carrying it on even today. Yeah, he's died actually, my grandfather. He sure he will be proud of me that I came to Bethlehem with zero, but now thanks God I have a small business of silver. The same business was what he's doing here. Yeah. So what is your prayer now for the future? I pray just God. Uh, sure, we are humans. I'm asking God to forgive our sins to make me clear from sins, to protect me from evil all around, to to save my steps, to not go the wrong way or the way makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, and uh, the most important that he forgive me about my sins and to save my steps. And I'm praying to open way for me in future to see my parents, to see my fiance. It's like I am between... Uh, uh, two big choices or not choices like I want to see my my parents I want to see my fiance I'm just stuck between two lands yeah so I'm praying just God have a solution for that I can see my fiance marry her live with her and see my parents and to mercy me in my life to make me successful guy and to use me this is so important that to use me and my future wife to use us in his way. You've been listening to Issa Amash, a Christian from Gaza talking to Paul Calvert. And we hope Issa's prayers are soon answered. Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of both Jewish believers and Arab or Palestinian Christians living in Israel and the wider Middle East. If you'd like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please visit our website, olivetreefund.org. Meanwhile, join me at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.